Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be going over the ever so popular Titan Nuclear Consecration build with Symphoseps and also showing you how if you have the conditional finality unlocked, you can make a snazzy setup with the two combined. Going over a few popular builds that were common before the mod update, I want to see how well the Consecration build could do as under the right circumstances, you could pull off an ignition one after another over and over again. Now things have changed up, we have a whole lot of new bonuses being applied, such as a fast ability regen for melee and discipline this season, very high damaging melee ignitions that can take out ultra level threats, and a new 1 2 setup with conditional finality elemental effects that you can build into one way or another. This off meta build is great for ad clearing with a flare and can be useful against most bosses if you dare. So let's dive in. To start, you're going to want to have Consecration, where sliding with full charged melee will launch a wave of solar energy forward, damaging and scorching anyone there. While airborne, activating your charged melee again will slam you to the ground and trigger another blast which will ignite. And then you want to have warm flames while final blows with solar abilities increase the damage of your solar abilities. The simple method here will be to build into our melee damage first via Symphoseps, and then once at max damage, we can then go ahead and trigger our charge melee attack for a devastating finish. Now this won't always be the case, and one issue with doing this is generally you might miss your first shot, or follow up shot after. To fix this, we will be building into ignitions as a secondary objective, so that even if we land the first hit via our melee, but not the second, we can at least follow this up with our grenades or weapon with incandescent. This also feeds back into getting our melee energy back fast, so it kind of works out for us overall. Looking into the fragments, Ember Eruption, where solar ignitions have increased area effect, Ember Searing, where defeating school's targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprite, Ember Shah, where your solar ignition spreads scores to another target, and Ember of Ashes, where you apply more score stacks to targets. The most important fragment to have here is the Ember of Searing, as this here is easy to proc, but also will be giving us both melee and grenade energy back, which we will need. The ignition fragments will be handy, not only for the powered melee, but also for our exotic, which can also benefit from this largely. So if you want to, you could add on the Ember Blistering Fragment, where defeating targets or ignitions grant you back grenade energy. With how the new Radio Exotic works, you can build into ignition so that it benefits your attacks and also synergize along the way. For the mods and stats section, we are going to invest in the discipline just so that our ability is always reliable to use outside of our exotic. At the same time, resilience and strength will also be helping us in the long run, but in a small degree. Because of how the subclass trait works, we can kind of leave our strength stat low as there are many ways to get it back without needing to invest into a stat. Let's start with a simple one, which is the discipline stat. At tier 7 to 10, we can utilize our fireball grenades and seasonal mods that have a higher and faster rate of scorch adding 9 targets. I have mine at 10 so that when I do use my charge milling, I can then easily follow up with 2 grenades to ignite the target again if I choose to. Or I can use this to trigger Ember Searing for that melee and grenade energy region. Because of how fast our firework grenade's uptime is, you don't need to have a grenade kickstart mod to help you in any way or form. You can add on the bomber or innovation mod if your stat is low, but this is entirely up to you. Your strength now can ideally be at tier 4 to 5 considering that a lot of things will be happening here, including our subclass effects, mini kickstart, momentum transfer, invigoration, and distribution are what I went for in terms of getting my charge melee back and this has worked out pretty well as long as you create this orb of power and trigger your ember of searing effect. Now resilience can be at tier 7 to 10 as we do want to have a high damage reduction while playing as if you intend to use this in most endgame content then you want to think ahead for protection. Considering that the build is pretty self sufficient within this subclass trait you can invest into other key areas such as the armor charged mods to sustain the build for longer. Charged up times 2 and stacks on stacks is going to make sure we always have enough charge available to pull off our abilities along with heavy handed and solo siphon for creating orbs on the way. For some extra countermeasures I would then recommend having the special ammo finder mod on hand just in case you run our special ammo and then also the 1-2 finisher mod for the same as well but for your midi only. 
Now lastly, the weapons being used will need to have incandescent on it so that we can create scorch from kills and also use it to trigger ignitions via grenades and milling. This will feed back into the many abilities we have that utilize the scorch effect as a large, so anything is fine as long as it has incandescent on it. The so called Callus Mini tool is a great incandescent monster if you have the right role for it. Although not many people can get the weapon now, there are many, many other weapons you can chase that can get the role as well, such as Zalo's Bane, Stag Kato 46, Ruchoi's Path, and the BXR 55 Battler. The last two mentioned can be farmed and easily gotten a god roll form after much leveling is done on your end. Now I would also recommend the conditional finality shotgun simply because it worked out really well for the build. It can freeze on its first hit and then follow up an ignition blast that can shred all targets within this area. Now if you have it then by all means do add it to the build as it can work out really well after using your consecration on the boss and then follow up with a shotgun in hand. At the same time, I do know that not everyone has the weapon yet, so don't fret. A fusion rifle with chill clips such as Riptide is a great alternative to have for the following setup. Now with the following build, you should now be able to proc concentration at a much faster rate than what we were able to do before, and then follow this up with a wealth of orbs of power at your disposal. It's a great build to use in the now ongoing background activities as the build can decimate large groups of ads in one full hit or it can double down for another full hit and ignite targets for a large scale explosion. With how simple the mod system is, you can use the following and get back half to full melee charge whether you land your first charge melee or second and this can have benefits if used against a large enemy with large health. For example, if I use this on the champion or tormentor you can in practice get your melee refunded if your fragments and key mods trigger at the right time. Along with that, we then have many ways to scorch and spread effects far and wide which will feed back into a melee and then on top of that, our exotic shotgun can allow us to melt through the more tanky enemies if we need to weaken them or outright kill them. It's incredible how this one ability that has been used before when Elemental Worlds was a thing has gotten even more stronger and better in the mean run. Even with Synthercept added, I could see the build not even needing to use the following exotic as the Scorch and Ignition damage should be strong enough for flexibility. Now I have tried to build out in Legend Background and it worked out as well as you would expect it to. The damage is there and I can take out the large groups of shield adds in 2 full hits if pulled off. However, I've noticed that while you're airborne you become vulnerable to incoming attacks and this here is one of the downsides of using the build in higher difficulty. With no extra protection, you become a sitting duck before you finish your animation and this here means that there is no way to get out of it in time before being killed. This overall makes the build only viable up to legendary content as it can work when timed correctly but it won't work in all endgame content no matter how much protection is added. So nonetheless, the build is more of a off meta than endgame build which is totally fine for me as it does its job and generally it's fun to play with. But ultimately, what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and comments shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then do leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.